Hello again. Here is something which most people watching this video will already know. If you allow people free access to large sums of money and do not ensure that they are held strictly to account for what happens to it, some of that money, perhaps all of it, will vanish. This is simply a fact of life, a law as fixed and immutable as the force of gravity. Unguarded money will go missing. This is why organisations like shops, banks, schools, hospitals, charities, government departments and so on all insist on careful record keeping and the storing of invoices and receipts. If they didn't do so, then money would soon start to disappear. This phenomenon will occur regardless of ethnicity. It is simply a brute fact. Something which I have noticed is that many progressive white middle class people imagine that this is only something which happens with white people and doesn't apply to black people. They have the idea, I think, that black people are more trustworthy and noble where money is concerned, especially when the money is supposedly being used in the cause of anti-racism or for the black community or something. This unaccountable faith in human nature, which flies in the face of all that we know about humanity, causes some foolish white liberals to throw money at black people who claim to be battling on behalf of their community. This was especially noticeable in the wake of George Floyd's death a few years ago, when every white liberal was keen to demonstrate his or her credentials by handing over large amounts of money to those claiming to represent the Black Lives Matter movement. It wasn't just individuals. Big companies and corporations were giving millions to Black Lives Matter. Common sense seemed to fly out of the window, and nobody after giving those vast sums of money to Black Lives Matter, bothered to ask for receipts or invoices or any evidence as to how that money was spent. This is really, by the way, a form of racism. Nobody would dream of giving millions of dollars in that way to a bunch of white people and then trusting them to do the right thing without checking up on them and demanding evidence as to what the money had been spent on. They simply relied on those to whom they gave that money to do the proper thing with it because they were black people. That was both foolish and wrong-headed and also suggests that those doing so believed that black people were in some way different from the rest of us and would not do what everybody else in the world would do under those circumstances. Which was, of course, to ensure that the donated money was used only for their benefit and the benefit of their family members. When the woman who helped organise the riot in Bristol, which ended with the throwing of that statue into the harbour there in 2020, when she was raising funds, she claimed that these would enable black children in Bristol to visit Africa on an educational trip. How could anybody resist the idea of that time of um, giving money to a member of Black Lives Matter so that they could see black children from Bristol sent to Africa on a fact-finding tour or something. It didn't take her long at all to uh, raise £30,000. When it came to light that Yvonne Mayner, or Zara Salim, as she was then styling herself, had simply pocketed the money, People were shocked, far more shocked, I suspect, than they would have been if a white person had cheated a charity out of funds in that way. We learned today that one of the American women who founded a Black Lives Matter organisation in the United States has been up to similar tricks. In 2020, she signed a deal with Warner Brothers to produce television documentaries about the black struggle. Nobody knows how much money she got from this, but two years later, Warner Brothers terminated the deal 
because she had produced absolutely nothing over that time. Mugs. Despite the many millions of dollars given to Black Lives Matter by big businesses in America in 2020, the movement is more or less bankrupt now. Patrice Cullors, who uh, was a co-founder of the organisation, of course, paid her brother one and a half million dollars. She paid the father of one of her children a million dollars and there were some pretty extensive purchases of real estate. In other words, she and her family were doing very nicely out of the Black Lives Matter business. This is, of course, exactly what I would expect many white people to do under similar circumstances. And because I assume that most people of any colour have similar instincts and inclinations, I wasn't in the least surprised to see a black person doing precisely the same thing. The weird thing is, as I say, that people seem more apt to hand over large amounts of money to black people who claim to be working on behalf of the black community without asking for any evidence of what they will actually do with this money. This is, of course, an open invitation for embezzlement and fraud. And, lo and behold, we see a good deal of such things in the BLM movement. If only people realised that black people and white are all essentially similar in their instincts, then people would not behave in this silly way.